Hey guys, Stealth here, and welcome back to the Red October adventure series in From the Depths, where I'm trying to keep my little submarine here alive against all sorts of threats, depending on, well, varying from surface threats to uh, aerial threats to even subsurface threats, although we haven't seen those in a while. At the moment, there is still one target around. Uh, we still have a duster marine overhead. Uh, there is a bit of salvage over there. There's a lot of salvage over there. For now, the area seems relatively safe. Now, some of these weapon systems that I've built over the last few episodes have proven to be not very effective. Um, we have seen that the drills, while amusing, require me to be much, much heavier. I don't want to do that. It's an interesting system, it's a fun system to use, but I don't want to work with them anymore. So I'm going to take all the drills off, and I'm going to potentially later on build another, but for now, not so much. I also think that it doesn't really fit with the, the look and feel of the sub. Something else that I need to work on is my ability to deal with aerial units. Because as we have seen, it is not uncommon for my missiles to not even make it to the surface. Simply because they don't live long enough. My current depth is 100 meters and, well, those small missiles, these boys over here, they have a lifetime of 30 seconds, which means that they spend, I think, 10, maybe 20 seconds off that 30 seconds just trying to get to the surface. And on top of that, it is actually much safer for me to stay down. The deeper I am, the less likely it is that weapons can actually get to me. But there is something else that I'm willing to try, and this is something that one of you suggested in the comment section of a previous video. Why not make a large missile? A large missile has um, space to hold either medium or small missiles, and that way they can make it to the surface. Because if I understand it correctly, their lifetime, so what you're looking at over here, only starts at the moment that they get launched. And if that large missile can get to the surface, well, then we're perfectly fine. So what I'm going to do is, and this is not the first time that I'm doing this, completely remove the missile launcher in the conning tower. Because right now it doesn't work as well as I would like. So time to take that thing off and make room for something new. Um, I think that it should should fall off at this point. Yeah, there it goes. Let's speed that up a little. Because I'm running the game on very, very slow as I'm making these edits to the ship. Now, um, there is one little thing. I need a decent amount of room here to make this thing fit. I'm thinking of using a uh, large missile launcher. Because they're actually not... Ooh. <laughs> uh, I was going to say they're not that bad. Um, they are. That is, if you're picking a 4x4 hatch. But those things have a, a huge amount of durability and a huge price tag. Uh, the 2x2 hatch is actually much, much more affordable. So I would set these things up like this. Oh, by the way, I also need to get rid of the... What was that? That was the harpoon launcher that I had there. The harpoon which was going to bring stuff towards the drills. But it's no longer required. Alright, missiles then. Large missiles, large gantry. And I think that this should do. Because the large missile itself is really only a delivery vehicle. That's the only job it has. It doesn't need to make sure that the weapon gets, or that the, the target... No, how should I put that? Uh, that whatever it is that's going out there meets it, makes it to the target. It's only there to make sure that the uh, attached missiles get to the surface. So in order to do that, I think I can just go with a cluster controller. Cluster extension, extension, extension. That's basically it, I think. And the lifetime of these is already 80 seconds. Now, I have one meter per module, so I have a room of four meters. That means that uh, I can fit two missiles at four meters long, correct? And this also means that these missiles 
they don't actually need to have any torpedo propellers or ballast tanks or shit like that. So that might free them up. Uh, this needs to be a control, a cluster ejector. Yeah, required four meters. Uh, lifetime 20 seconds is fine. Explosive warhead? No, we're going to be targeting aerial units, so frag warheads only. I think an infrared seeker can work. I think it can work. The only thing is, I don't know if these will actually make it to the surface. For the simple reason that they don't have any guidance system at the moment. None. Um, I'm willing to try though. I think weapon system 3 is available. Yeah. Alright, so here we go. Uh, launching weapon 3. There. These things are going to make it to the surface. Altitude. 60, 50, 40. Oh, I didn't actually set any prerequisites for when they drop off their missiles. <laughs> That's a bit of a waste. Ah, oh, there's a marine duster over there. See, this would be an interesting time slash altitude for them to start popping out. Uh, drop above altitude of 20 meters. That's really all that I need. Because once they're higher than 20 meters, it's fine. Um, the rest of it, I don't really care about, I think. There's the flat gun going off. These things also reload pretty quick. 20 seconds. Alright, so let's try that again. Weapon 3. Off you go. Speed it up a bit. So, let's see if these things will now release their small missile. Yes! They do indeed. Small missile, or the medium missiles, however, do not have any target. That's nice. And these things are just continually going to bob up and down by the looks of it. What are you doing? Where's that duster? There it is. Right. Uh, give me... Oh, we are already at one time speed. Okay, so let's go to the surface. Let's see what happens. What the f <laughs> These things are going to bob up and down here for the next 80 seconds or so. Once they've completed their lifetime, then they stop. Okay, uh, let's turn the AI off. I don't want to be firing anything else at the moment. So I don't have... Oh, I think we hit it. Yes, it's dead. Good man. All right, so that leaves us with the target over where? Is everything dead? No, there. All right, so we're gonna pop out number four. And there they go. But they're currently set to infrared, so right now they cannot go anywhere because they simply don't see anything. But I think this is an interesting delivery system, because it seems to work. Now, the thing with these is that they need to have an active radar seeker. Uh, and before they speed up to full, I want to make sure that they first have a lock. There. Once they do speed up to full, they can make it to 100 and... No, they can make it to 205 meters per second. Which means that they can catch pretty much anything. The only thing that I would like on them is a prediction guidance. And that, considering it's a, a very small component, still gives me plenty of fuel. Okay. Uh, what's your flight time? 20 seconds times 200 meters. It's four kilometers. Okay. Testing again. Hatch open. Popping out the large missiles. Good altitude and off you shoot to absolutely nowhere. See, the problem is I cannot follow those because I can only follow the base launcher, these guys. What I might be able to do, however, just to make sure that these things get to the surface even faster, is use ejector add-ons. That way I can probably also launch them from deeper down. At least, I hope so. 
Okay, now they should go out really quickly. Wee! <laughs> and off you go. Okay, excellent. And they... I think... I think that some of those missiles... That... Yep. They're hitting my own ship. Because this thing doesn't have an IFF. That sucks. So the delivery system kind of works. Would it help if I make these things smaller missiles? If I were to just use small launchers. Because I could have a, a pretty small weapon then. Uh, I would have a cluster ejector. They require two meters per. So that doesn't quite fit. So in order to make that work, I would need to make this thing one, one block larger, I think. Yeah, one meter per module. So I would need a module of five, because that then gives me five meters. And these things require... No, actually, I could fit two of these, if I'm correct. Activator seeker. Um... Yeah, explosive is fine for now. Prediction guidance. Lifetime 10 seconds. They're really quick. Really, really, really quick. I just hope that they are able to find any target inside of that time span. And I can even have them go faster. So let's say that they have a thrust before lock-on of uh, 25. Once they have lock-on, they can just race towards their target at 272 meters per second. I think I can get away with this. So I'm going to remove that one and that one. And I can probably copy that launcher to the other side as well. So a small launcher and a small gantry. Now, the cluster controller over here, I can set them at a stagger drop of uh, 0 0.3 seconds. Reason for that is that they don't all move in one big cluster, but they're going to slightly, slightly split up. Now, again, checking. I need one. No, I have uh, four modules. And these things oh, need to be copied. Two meters. So I could set up two of those launchers, meaning I pop out uh, eight small missiles per launcher, if my math adds up there. We need to have a connector there as well. Okay. So this should work. There's no targets around, but so be it. Uh, prepare weapon three. Where am I? Here. Okay, off you go. Yes. That is the required effect. That's exactly it. Now, as you can see, their lifetime is very, very short. And because of that, they will only work if there's something pretty much directly above the submarine. But that's exactly what I need. Because my anti-air weapon, my anti-air gun... Well, let's say I'm not terribly enthusiastic about A, the design, and B, the effect. I find them both to be a bit lacking. So I might just stick with this uh, anti-air weapon as I have it right now. So let's do a bit of combat, shall we? Let's see if I can put that thing to the test. Give me mirror mode. I'm going to seal up the tower again. Uh, here, this needs to be a single block then. And another one. Whoops, not there. Here. For now, I'll hang on to that turret. But not terribly enthusiastic about it. I might actually use this weapon system more often in a way that I can launch bigger stuff. Or more missiles, potentially. Uh, lifetime 80 seconds is fine. 
Material cost 12.8. So it's a it's a not a terribly expensive weapon. Now, time for some combat. Who would like to go first? And why can I see daylight through my submarine? This is my little control position, right? Wait. Oh! It's just some sort of visual effect. I'm actually fine, there's nothing there. Okay, so, target. Uh, move that way at any point. So we're gonna turn west. Let's speed up. And turn to west. I still very much have to address my power needs as well. But I don't want to do a complete build episode. Because I've done already quite a few of those on this series. And I also want to have a bit of conflict. Alright, so we're now heading west. Ish. There. We're only doing 7 meters per second though. 8 meters per second. 11. Any targets nearby? Or did they all just mutually kill each other off? I think they did. Yeah. Alright, I'll go pick up some resources, and when there's something interesting to show you, I will show you. Right, something interesting. Um, while I was waiting, I decided to do a bit of surgery on the ship. And as one does, uh, a little surgery in from the depths basically doesn't exist. I ended up turning the whole submarine <laughs> into alloy. Um, which caused the submarine to get so light that it went right to the surface. Now, the alloy does make quite a bit of a difference, also hopefully in speed. Because the weight on these things is 5 and the weight on these things is 40. What I had to resort to is a, a big lead keel over here, and I hope that this thing is going to keep me actually down. Of course, I still have to do quite a bit of work on the stern. Um, for reference, this is the old stern of the Red October. That's the old stern. So I have a lot of extra room here, which I can use for propulsion, and I'm thinking of setting up a big steam engine here to make sure I can go faster because going places spawns in enemies. For now though, my biggest concern is to make sure I can get a couple of, uh, well, flooded compartments in here. So we're gonna set up some compartments uh, and basically drown them out because that way I can start submerging. Submarine on the surface is usually not a happy submarine. So this should be one compartment. And I might have to reorganize these as we progress, but for now, this is one compartment. Throw on an air pump. Uh, total buoyancy. It has one neighboring pump. Really? Oh, hold on. There's one line that I didn't cover up yet. Uh, lightweight. I'm just going to use single blocks here. I know it's not ideal. Now you know what? Just, just quad it. There. And then one, one single block here. Here. Okay, this should give it uh, its own little compartment. Not breached, submerged, none. Pump, off. Okay, so that's one. Um, <laughs> I still have my rudder internally. At this point, I have zero propulsion. None, I'm not going anywhere. And on top of that, I don't have any way of stabilizing the craft. Which for a submarine, at least from my experience and from the depths, is rather important. You want to make sure that these things are capable of stabilizing themselves, uh, both in pitch and in roll, or they're going to do all sorts of crazy stuff. This thing is set to pitch preset, very good. I'm going to set them over here to roller presets. I know they can do both, but I generally am not that advanced in this game. Roller presets. Roller presets. And another one here on the stern to make this thing stable. Um, 
on the stern here. That's a pitch preset. Yes. Okay. Um, we're still on the surface, and more pressingly, actually, there's something right in front of me. Uh, a rat. 2200 materials. I still have uh, <laughs> almost 18,000 materials behind me. It's because the build is cheaper. Metal is going to cost you five light without. Oh, actually, no, it's the same. Huh. Interesting. So that should actually not refund me anything. And considering that I didn't take any of the weapon systems off, I'm not exactly sure why there's so many materials out here. Um, you know what? Let's use weapon three since we're waiting. Uh, give me full time speed or full speed. I don't think that rat even has anything that it can do. So ideally... Oh, you're going to pick the biggest rate of return. Come on. Find that rat. Really? Really. Okay, really. In that case, we'll just have to use the, ga the main gun manually. Which one of you clowns is firing at my ship? Are you not blessed with the perils or with the, the, the beauties of an IFF? Is that why I'm getting hit? Missiles, IFF. Uh, yeah, I guess you were not. Huh. That is not great. Uh, weapon 2. Uh, they're going to go for the Telemachus, which is four and a half clicks out. Okay. Uh, can I take manual control of this boy? Yeah, congrats. You're now at weapon 5. Damn it. I think that rat is trying to do some damage to me. Weapon 5. Blow it up. Thank you. That was smooth. Now, we need to find a way to get down. Because I'm not going anywhere. I think I have too much buoyancy. Can I see that anywhere? Let's slow down. Wait, 148,000. Blocks, fine. Total firepower, okay. Physics... Hmm. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, you can actually 3D print your own design. I didn't know they uh, they added that. So I could take this thing, make an STL file, and I could 3D print my own submarine or whatever other craft I make. That is nice. Now, um, how do we sink? I think we might need to go for more lead because the submarine just has too much buoyancy. Which is a problem for a submarine. There. This is going to be a pretty uh, easy balancing act. Because the only thing that you need to do is make sure that it starts to dive. Because once I need to go to the surface, I can just have my pumps get the water back out. So that's the easy part. Going down at the moment is the hard part. Oh, right, I used two meter beams there. Are we sinking? Six meters. Seven. Wow. Not particularly quick, eh? Okay. More metal <laughs> more lead beams. This must be a two. Yeah. I had to mess around with some of the two blocks and some of the four blocks because at some point you start tapering towards the stern of the ship, boat, whatever, craft. And at that point, it becomes a bit of a, a game to see if you can actually make it look decent 
while at the same time uh, working with two and four blocks for, well, as much strength as you can get out of that thing. There. Eight, nine. Really? Oh, I think actually it's working. Ever so slowly, we're starting to dive. Okay, good. Now then on the stern, and I'm sorry, I said we we're going to do combat, but here I am doing another redesign. Uh, resources, I need a couple of huge storages, considering that we have a lot of materials lying around. There we go, 228 is what we can store now. Something else that I'm going to do off screen is add rubber tiling, because rubber makes your craft less um, less likely to get detected, I believe. It's not just, at least from what I understand of it, it is not just something that allows you to uh, bump into stuff and bounce off of it, but it also means that you have less of a sonar return. Reinforced decking, no. Applique paneling. I don't think something like that's gonna hit me. I think if I can counter, uh, if I can counter torpedo it, if that's a thing, like using my anti-torpedo systems, it should be sufficient. Now, in case you're wondering why this overhaul, uh, well, speed is one. I want to be able to go places at a better speed than just 11 meters per second. And on top of that, I want to have more of those large missile systems. I had to take off the huge missile launcher. That's, oh, yeah, that's why I have all those materials. Um, so we're out of the huge torpedo launcher, but that's fine. You know what, since it's the build episode anyway, we're going to just build some more. Um, steam engines... Give me a huge crank motor, game permitting, ideally in line with the center of mass-ish. So here, and then a sealed shaft. Hold on. I think the shaft should not be... Oh, right. No, it's fine. Um, I used a two meter block to close up the sub. So these are two blocks deep, which is not bad, but for what I need over here, it's not good. Because I can just use a one. Uh, steam engines, sealed shaft, there. Crank motor, there. And then we're going to use the 7 meter large propeller. No, I want it over there. Or maybe I even want two. If I'm not going to go places quickly with that, I don't know what's going to do it. So we're going to have to remove this one. And that. And where exactly... Where exactly do I need to have those things? I should be able to spot that. And just replace that with a... What do you call it? Those things. So, two of these boys. And that is that block. Here. Yes, there's the propeller. Okay, steam engines. Shield shaft. That way, not attached to a steam engine, correct. That is coming up now. Let's not go at full blast just yet. Currently at 12% of main drive, I'm doing nine meters per second. That's not bad. Uh, no, not metal blocks, alloy blocks. I'm still more or less running on the surface, though. That's not good. I really don't want to be on the surface. Even though I'm not sticking out as much as the Glorious was, I still want nothing to do with the surface here. I am, however, curious to see what sort of speed I can get up to. 
13, 14 meters per second, 15. Yeah, we're definitely using a ton of power here. Uh, far more than I'm possibly generating. And we're still on the surface. All right, throw on more lead. That's the heaviest weight, right? 200. Yeah, heavy armor is hefty too for weight. Probably also gives a hell of a rate of return. Hmm. I'm pretty rich though, resource wise. So I might just be able to replace some of the paneling here. Sort of an, a frame to make the ship. There we go. Heavier. So that if I get hit by, for example, a cram shell from the top, I'll be able to survive it. And it's also a sort of a cheap way to store resources, I guess. Because by doing this, I might be able to eventually recoup it by just replacing it with cheaper stuff. And besides, I still have plans for a missile launcher on there, so that's fine. All right, now the question is, can we actually get back to the surface? Because I am set to a depth of minus 100, so a depth of 100. That means that some of these air pumps are now... Yeah, we're staying around 100. Okay, excellent. Right, um, off screen I'll be building an engine to make sure that this thing can get all the uh, kinetic energy that it will require. And then we can see how fast the thing will go. Again, more combat next time. Um, at least I keep saying so. I don't know if it's actually going to happen. But I'll try to make sure that it does. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Hope you guys enjoy the new look of the Red October. And I'll see you guys Thursday for the next episode. Thank you for watching. I'll see you then.